Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 90 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to be covering arithmetic with fractions. So that's adding fractions, subtracting fractions, multiplying fractions and dividing fractions. So in this video we're going to look at all of those skills. I'm going to do a few examples of each of them and then give you a couple of examples to try yourself. So let's get started. So today I'm going to be looking at adding fractions and subtracting fractions and also mixed numbers as well. So to begin with, I'm going to go through a couple of examples. Feel free to pause this video and to try the questions yourself if you want to, if you feel confident with adding fractions. Alternatively, feel free to watch me do them. Then I've got a couple for you to try yourself. We'll look at subtracting fractions and then I've got a wordy question for us to look at at the end. So we've got work out two fifths plus one third. So when we're adding fractions with different denominators, it's very important to get fractions, equivalent fractions with the same denominator. So because the denominators are 5 and 3, we're going to find the lowest common multiple of 5 and 3, which is 15. Now, you could use any common multiple. You could use 30 and so on, but I'm going to use 15. So I'm going to find two equivalent fractions with 15 on the denominator. So 15 and 15. So to get from 5 to 15, we multiply by 3. So we're going to multiply the 2 by 3, and 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. So 2 fifths is equivalent to 6 fifteenths. Now we've got 1 third. Well, to get from 3 to 15, we multiply by 5. So we need to multiply the numerator by 5 as well. 1 times 5 is 5. So then we have 6 fifteenths plus 5 fifteenths, and 6 fifteenths plus 5 fifteenths is 11 fifteenths. So if we added together 2 fifths and 1 third, the answer would be 11 fifteenths. And that's it. Okay, now let's have a look at adding mixed numbers. So here we've got work out one and a half plus two and five eighths. And again, if you feel confident with adding fractions, feel free to give these a shot now yourself. But remember, I've got some questions for you to try in a minute anyway. So if we wanted to work this out, one and a half plus two and five eighths. So the first thing I would do is if I was doing this question is I would make both of these mixed numbers top heavy fractions. So if I had one and a half, well, that's one, which is two halves, and then another half, which would be three halves altogether. If we had a whole and we cut it into halves, there'd be two halves there, and then another half would be three halves or a quick way to do it is to do one times two which is two plus one is equal to three so it's three halves so i do one times two which is two plus one is three so it's three halves and then we've got plus now we're going to make our two and five eighths into a top heavy fraction as well and again we could consider it as if you got two holes and you cut it into eighths that would be 16 eighths and then another five eighths would be 21 eighths so that's 21 eighths. Alternatively, you could do 2 times 8 is equal to 16, plus 5 is equal to 21, so that's 21 eighths. So if we make these mixed numbers top-heavy fractions, we get 3 halves and 21 eighths. Now we're going to add these just like we've done before. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the same denominator, common denominator, where the lowest common multiple of 2 and 8 is actually 8, because 2, 4, 6, 8, and 8. So we're going to use 8 and 8. Now this one's quite nice, it's already 8, so that's going to be 21 eighths. In terms of the 3 halves, well to get from 2 to 8 we multiply by 4, so we need to multiply the numerator by 4 as well, and 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So 12 eighths is equivalent to 3 halves. So we've now got 12 eighths plus 21 eighths, so altogether adding the numerators would be equal to 33 eighths. And that's it. Now that's a top every fraction. Because the question gave us mixed numbers to begin with, I would usually change this back into a mixed number. So remember the line in the fraction means divided by. So we see how many eights go into 33. Well, 4 eights is 32, so it's going to be 4, that's 32. We'd have one more left over, so the answer would be 4 and an eighth. So 1 and a half plus 2 and 5 eighths would be 4 and an eighth. And that's it. So whenever you're adding fractions together with different denominators, we need to make sure they've got a common denominator, and then we just add the fractions together. And if they're mixed numbers, you might want to make them top heavy to begin with and then work it out and that's it okay now here's a couple of questions for you to try yourself so we've got work out three quarters plus one sixth and work out five and seven tenths plus three quarters so feel free to pause the video now and to give those questions a try Okay, so if we were to work out three quarters plus one six, we want to get a common denominator. So we want to get a common denominator. Well, because the denominators are four and six, I'm going to find the lowest common multiple of four and six. So four, eight, 12, six, 12. So I'm going to use 12 and 12. Remember, you could use over denominators. You could use 24 and so on, but it just means at the end, you might have to cancel down. So to get from four to 12, we multiply by three. So we need to multiply the numerator by three. Three times three is equal to nine. And to get from six to 12, we double it. So we double the numerator. We'll be two. So we've got nine twelfths plus two twelfths, and that's equal to eleven twelfths, and that's it. So hopefully you got that whenever you tried it yourself. Okay, our next question is to work out five and seven tenths plus three quarters. So I'm going to make this mixed number top heavy. So five times ten is equal to fifty, plus seven is fifty-seven, so that's fifty-seven tenths. So if we had five and seven tenths, that's equal to fifty-seven tenths, and that makes sense because if you've got five holes, that's going to be fifty tenths, and another seven will be fifty-seven tenths. And then we've got plus three quarters. 
and now we want to add these together we need a common denominator so 10 and 4 well i'm thinking 20 because 10 20 and 4 8 12 16 20 so i'm going to use 20 and 20. you could have used 40 and so on but and just remember you might have some extra cancelling down at the end so to get from 10 to 20 we double it so we need to double the numerator here so double 57 would be 114 and to get from 4 to 20 we multiply by 5 so 3 times 5 is equal to 15. so that's given us 114 20 ifs plus 15 20 ifs now we just need to add these together so 114 20 ifs plus 15 20 ifs would be 129 20 ifs and that's it. Now that's the top every fraction. Because in the question we have mixed numbers, I would convert this into a mixed number at the end. So we see how many 20s go into 129. Because remember, the line means divided by. So that would be equal to 6. 6 20s is equal to 120. So 6. We'd have 9 left over. So the answer would be 6 and 9 twentieths. And that's it. So hopefully you got that right as well. Okay, so we've looked at adding fractions. Now let's have a look at subtracting fractions. So we've got work out 6 11 subtract a half and work out 2 and a third subtract 3 quarters. Now in terms of subtracting fractions, the first step is the same, getting equivalent fractions with the same denominator. And instead of adding the numerators, you just take away the numerators. So feel free at this point to pause the video and to try these subtracting fractions yourself, just getting equivalent fractions with the same denominator and then subtracting the numerator rather than adding them. Okay, so if I was to work out 6 11 subtract a half, the first thing I would do is get a common denominator. So we've got 11 and 2, so I'm thinking 22, so 22, and then subtract and something over 22. To get from 11 to 22, we double it, so let's double the numerator, that's going to be 12. And to get from 2 to 22, we multiply by 11, so 1 times 11 is 11. So we've got 12 20 seconds, subtract 11 20 seconds, so that's going to be equal to 1 20 second. So that's 1 over 22, and that's it. So 6 11 subtract a half would be 1 over 22, and that's it. So hopefully you got that right. And the main difference is just we subtract the numerators, we've done 12, take away 11, rather than add them whenever you add them fraction. There's not much of a difference really apart from 1, you add them, 1, you subtract them. Okay, so the next question is to work out 2 and a third subtract 3 quarters. So again, we would make this the top every fraction. Fraction. So 2 and a third, well 2 times 3 is equal to 6, plus 1 is equal to 7, so that'll be 7 thirds. And remember, if we're dealing with thirds in two holes, that'll be 6 thirds, and another one will be 7 thirds, and then we'll get subtract 3 quarters. Now in terms of these fractions, we want to get a common denominator, so I'm thinking 12 and 12, and a subtract sign in the middle. To get from 3 to 12, we multiply by 4, so let's multiply the numerator by 4, so that'll be 28. And to get from 4 to 12, we multiply by 3, so let's multiply the numerator by 3, so that'll be 9. So we've got 28 twelfths, take away 9 twelfths, well 28 take away 9 is equal to 19, so that'll be 19 twelfths. And again, that's the top of every fraction, so let's then change that into a mixed number. How many twelfths go into 19? 1, remainder 7, so that'll be 1 and 7 twelfths, and that's it. So if we were to work out 2 and a third, subtract 3 quarters, the answer would be 1 and 7 twelfths. And again, the main difference is just we're subtracting the numerators rather than adding them, and that's it. Now let's have a look at a wordy question. Okay, now here's something for you to try yourself. So, so we're told that Estelle is training for a race, and she runs 3 and 4 fifth miles during week 1, and she runs 5 and 2 thirds miles during week 2. How far has Estelle run in total? over the two weeks so what we want to do is we want to work out the total distances she's run over the two weeks so we know how far she's run on week one we know how far she's run on week two so if we add these together that'll give us the total distance she's run over the two weeks so let's do that so we're going to do three and four fifths plus five and two thirds and if we add these together that'll give us the total distance that she's run so let's make them top every fractions to begin with so three and four fifths so three times five is equal to 15 plus four is 19 so that's 19 fifths and again if we're dealing with fifths in three holes that's going to be 15 and another four will be 19 fifths plus and then we've got five and two thirds well five times three is equal to 15 plus two is equal to 17 so that's 17 thirds and again checking that in five holes if we're dealing with thirds that's 15 thirds plus another two would be 17 thirds so we're getting there now we want to find equivalent fractions with the same denominator so because we're dealing with fifths and thirds i'm thinking 15 and 15 on the denominator because 5 10 15 and 3 6 9 12 15 again you could have chosen 30 and so on but it just means you might have a bit of extra cancelling down at the end and then we've got our plus sign to get from 5 to 15 we multiply by 3 so we need to do 19 times 3 so let's do that up here so 19 multiplied by 3, let's see what we would get. 3 times 9 is equal to 27, so put our 7 down, carry a 2. 3 times 1 is equal to 3, plus 2 is 5, so that's 57. So it's going to be 57 fifteenths. Now in terms of our next fraction, to get from 3 to 15, we multiply by 5, so we need to multiply 17 by 5. So we're going to do 17 multiplied by 5. So 5 times 7 is equal to 35, put a 5 down, carry a 3. 5 times 1 is equal to 5, plus 3 is equal to 8. So it's going to be 85 fifteenths. 
So we've now got two fractions with the same denominator. Now we can just add them together. So we need to do 57 fifteenths plus 85 fifteenths. So let's do that. And again, let's go up here. So 57 plus 85 and see what we get. So 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. Put our 2 down, carry our 1. 5 plus 8 is equal to 13 plus 1 is 14. So it's going to be 142 fifteenths. So let's change this into a mixed number. So remember that the line of the fraction means divided by, so we want to see how many fifteens go into 142. Now actually, if you notice, 10 times 15 would be 150. To get 9 fifteens, that'll be 135. So 9 times 15 would be 135. You could list your multiples of 15 and go 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105, 120, and 130, and 135. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Six, seven, eight, nine, and do it that way if you wish. So it's going to be 9. So that's 135. We had a 142, so the remainder is 7. So it's going to be 9 and 7 fifteenths. So how far did Estelle run over the two weeks? The answer would be 9 and 7 fifteenths miles. And that's it. Hi, today we're going to be looking at how to multiply fractions and how to divide fractions. So multiplying fractions is actually quite nice. All we need to do to multiply fractions together is just multiply the numerators and the denominators. So if we had 5 eighths multiplied by 2 thirds, we could just multiply the numerators. 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And we can multiply the denominators. 8 times 3 is equal to 24. So 5 eighths multiplied by 2 thirds would be 10 24ths. Now here, if you have a look here, the numerator and the denominator are both even. So we can actually cancel this fraction down. So dividing both of these by 2 would give us 5 twelfths. So just make sure whenever you're multiplying fractions that you, make, you check and see if you can cancel down at the end. So 5 eighths multiplied by 2 thirds would be equal to 5 twelfths. And that's it. Okay, now let's have a look and see how we would deal with mixed numbers. I'm thinking back to adding fractions. Whenever we were adding fractions or subtracting fractions with mixed numbers, we turned them into top-heavy fractions. And we're going to use the same technique. So 1 times 4 is equal to 4, plus 1 is equal to 5. So 1 on a quarter would be 5 quarters. And remember that if we're dealing with quarters, in a whole there's 4 quarters, and in a 1 will be 5 quarters. And then we've got multiply by 9 tenths. So we've got 5 quarters multiplied by 9 tenths. We now just need to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So 5 times 9 is equal to 45 and 4 times 10 is equal to 40. Now if we have a look here, 1 this is top heavy and 2 it can be cancelled down. So let's cancel it down to begin with. Both of these numbers are divisible by 5 so let's divide both of them by 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9 and 40 divided by 5 is 8. So that would be 9 eighths. And in this question we were dealing with mixed numbers so let's change this into a mixed number. So we want to change this into a mixed number so we say how many eighths go into 9? That's 1, remainder 1. So the answer would be 1 or 1 eighth. So if we had 1 on a quarter multiplied by 9 tenths, the answer would be the answer would be 1 and an eighth. And that's it. Okay, so that's how we multiply fractions together. Just multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators and cancel it down if you can. And likewise, in terms of mixed numbers, we make them top heavy to begin with and then just do the same technique. So here's some for you to try yourself. So pause the video and give these questions a try now yourself. Okay, so in terms of the first one, so let's multiply the numerators. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And then in terms of the denominator, 4 times 5 is equal to 20. Now we've got 6 twentieths. That can be cancelled down. Dividing the both of those by 2 would give us 3 tenths. And that's it. So 3 quarters multiplied by 2 fifths would be 3 tenths. Okay, now we've got to work out 1 on a quarter multiplied by 2 thirds. So let's make these top heavy fractions to begin with. So 1 times 4 is equal to 4, plus 1 is equal to 5, so that's going to be 5 quarters. And then multiply by. And then we had 2 and 2 thirds, well 2 times 3 is equal to 6, plus 2 is equal to 8, so it's going to be 8 thirds. And just to check that one, if we're dealing with thirds in two holes, that's going to be 6 thirds, and another 2 would be 8 thirds. So we've got 5 quarters multiplied by 8 thirds, so let's multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So 5 times 8 is equal to 40, and then 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So we've got 40 twelfths. Now this is top heavy and it can be cancelled down. Let's cancel it down to begin with. Both of these numbers, you could half them both. You can, actually, you can actually divide both of the numerator and denominator by 4. So 40 divided by 4 is 10, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that'll be 10 thirds, and change that into a mixed number, because in the question we were dealing with mixed numbers, how many 3s go into 10? That's going to be 3, remainder 1. So the answer would be 3 and a third. So 1 and a quarter multiplied by 2 and 2 thirds would be 3 and a third. Okay, so we've had a look at multiplying fractions together. Now let's have a look at dividing by a fraction. So if we had something, for instance, like 3 tenths divided by 2 fifths, instead of dividing by 2 fifths, what we would do is we'd multiply by the reciprocal. So we would multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing by. And the reason is, if we have a look at something like this, if we had 10 divided by half, and that's saying how many halves are there in 10? Well, if we had 10 
cakes or 10 holes and you would count up how many halves it would be, there'd be 20. And that'd be the same as if we had 10, and instead of dividing by a half, we multiply by the reciprocal. Now remember the reciprocal is what we get when we flip over a fraction. So if we had a half and we flipped it over, we would get two over one, or two over one's the same as two, so you'd have 10 multiplied by two, and 10 multiplied by two is equal to 20. So to divide by a fraction, what you can do is multiply by the reciprocal instead, and that's just a bit easier. So if we had three tenths divided by two fifths, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three tenths multiplied by five halves just flipping over the second fraction and multiplying by that reciprocal so we're going to do three tenths multiplied by five halves so three times five is equal to 15 and 10 times 2 is equal to 20 so three tenths divided by two fifths would be 15 twentieths this can be cancelled down both of these numbers are divisible by five so 15 divided by five is three and 20 divided by five is four so that's three quarters so three tenths divided by two fifths would be three quarters and that's it Okay, our next question. So this time we've got a mixed number. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to make it a top heavy fraction and then we're going to do the question like the rest of the dividing fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. So we've got three eighths divided by, now I'm not changing this to multiply yet. I'm going to make this a top heavy fraction first of all, just to make sure I don't make a mistake. So one and a quarter, well one and a quarter, well we do one times four is equal to four plus one is equal to five. So that'll be five quarters and just remember if we're dealing with quarters in a whole there's four quarters and another one will be five quarters so we had three eighths divided by one and a quarter and we've written that as a top heavy fraction so we've now got three eighths divided by five quarters now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the reciprocal so we're going to keep up so we're going to take our three eighths and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of five quarters and that's what we get when we flip it over so that'll be four fifths now we just need to multiply so three times four is equal to twelve and 8 times 5 is equal to 40. So that would be 12 fortieths. And this can be cancelled down. Both of these numbers are divisible by 4. You could half and half it again if you wanted to. But if we divide both of these by 4, how many 4s go into 12? That's going to be 3. And how many 4s go into 40? That's going to be 10. So that means that 3 eighths divided by 1 on a quarter would be 3 tenths. And that's it. So to divide fractions, what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing by. Okay, let's give you some questions now to try yourself. So here's two questions to try. Can you please work out 7 fifteenths divided by 3 quarters and then work out 2 and a half divided by 1 and 3 fifths? So if we were to work out this first one, we've got 7 fifteenths. And instead of dividing by 3 quarters, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 4 thirds. And then we've got 7 times 4, which is 28. And we've got 15 times 3, which is equal to 45. So we've got 28 over 45, and that can't be cancelled down. So that's it. So the answer is 28 40 fifths. Okay, in terms of our next question, we had two and a half divided by one and three fifths. Let's make them both top heavy to begin with. So two times two is equal to four, plus one is equal to five. So it's going to be five halves. And then we've got divided by, and I'm not changing that yet. I'm going to keep that as divided by. And we've got our one and three fifths. So one times five is equal to five, plus three is equal to eight. So we've got eight fifths. So two and a half divided by one and three fifths. If we make them both top heavy fractions, you'd have five halves divided by eight fifths. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of dividing by eight fifths, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we've got five halves multiply by, and the reciprocal of eight fifths would be five eighths, just flipping it over. Now if we multiply these together, we've got five times five is equal to 25. And on the denominator, two times eight is equal to 16. So that'd be 25 divided by 16. So how many 16s go into 25? That'll be one. And then the remainder would be nine. So that'd be one and nine sixteenths. So two and a half divided by one and three fifths would be one and nine sixteenths. And that's it. And one other thing I want to point out is just how to make sure you know how to type in the fraction and the mixed number button on the calculator. So if you've got a calculator like this, you've got the fraction button here. So this is the fraction button. So you just press that button, you would then get your fraction, and then you could just use the arrows and type in the fraction into the calculator. But if you wanted a mixed number, this thing here, the mixed number, so like for instance, one and a third, in yellow here above the fraction button, you've got this mixed number button. So you'd press shift and then you press the fraction button and then you would get the mixed number uh, boxes and then you could type in your mixed numbers. So just be careful whenever you type in fractions and mixed numbers, you're making sure that you press the fraction button if you want the fraction or if you want the mixed number, you're pressing shift and then the fraction button. If you've got a calculator like this one here, the fraction button is here. So you'd press that one for the fraction button. And again, use the arrows to type in your value and if you want the mixed number here what you do is press shift and then you press the fraction button because just above the fraction button there in yellow you've got the mixed number boxes and that's it and that's it so in this video we've looked at how to add fractions and mixed numbers how to subtract fractions and mixed numbers how to multiply fractions and mixed numbers and how to divide fractions and mixed numbers and we've also looked at how to type in those fractions and mixed numbers into your calculator 
So I really hope you found this video useful. One thing I would say is in this video, I've just been focused on those skills. So if you want to practice and get more practice in each of those, what I'd highly recommend is the practice questions because you might get some questions there in different contexts, which might be quite useful as well. So I really hope you found this video useful. There's obviously 90 days to go to your GCC maths exam. So one thing I'd recommend to at this point is that you're doing your five days. So because you're doing higher, I'd recommend your foundation plus, your higher. And if you're pushing for that top grade, your higher plus five days. And I really hope that you find those useful and I'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock. Cheers. Bye.